Losing fat in your stomach has to be the most difficult area to lose fat in the body, or at least that's my testimony. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Elias Bertrand, and just about over 10 years ago, I started my own fat loss journey. I remember one day vividly in high school where I was standing in the shower, looking down and not being able to see my feet because my stomach was so big. On my entire fat loss journey, my stomach has always been the last area that I lose fat, and honestly, I like to say the problem child. Fast forward four years later I'm a senior in high school and I remember standing in the shower yet again looking down and being able to see my feet and I had lost over 70 plus pounds then I ended up graduating and going to Michigan State where I was a D1 athlete and I just remember in that moment while I was in the shower looking at my feet thinking wow I actually lost stomach fat and a lot of it. In this video, I'm going to share proven tips that are going to help you reduce belly fat fast, things that have personally helped me on my own journey, and of course that are backed by science. It wouldn't be a video by me if I wasn't using science. For all the research and science, check out the sources linked in the description below. The first thing I'm going to share literally changes the game on how we look at reducing belly fat, and that is new research is emerging that it may just be possible to spot reduce fat. If you've been around the health and fitness industry for a while, you know everybody has been saying if you're trying to lose fat, you can't spot reduce. But a research group in 2023 found that they had two different groups. The first group they had work out for 47 minutes with no abs. The other group they had work out for 27 minutes with crunches and torso rotations at the end. And what they found is that both groups lost fat. They also had them burn the same amount of calories, which is really important. The group that paired abs at the end saw a loss in fat, but specifically more loss in abdominal fat. And this is critical because it may just be possible that you can spot reduce fat by doing the same thing. Now, what often happens is new research comes out and there will be people, one of two sides, saying this is new research, we can't be trusted until we have more research articles coming out, and other people who say, well, it's been proven within this case study, so we should proceed forward. Here is my opinion if you are someone who doesn't want to overcomplicate your life. Whether you are someone who does 30 minutes of cardio and pairs it with abs or you just do 47 minutes of cardio like the first group and you don't pair it with abs, regardless if you are in a caloric deficit, you are going to lose fat. If you do all of the rest of the tips that I'm going to share in this video, you are going to lose fat. So what am I saying? I'm saying that we don't need to overcomplicate our lives. I know when new research comes out and it's like this debate of can you spot reduce? Can you not spot reduce? Over time, if you lose enough fat, you will lose fat with in your stomach and some people it's a little bit easier than others but based on this case study if you do at least 30 minutes of cardio and then pair it with two ab exercises at the end of course, attached with being in a caloric deficit, you will likely see a reduction in stomach fat. There's more research that needs to be emerged and more cases that need to be studied, but I think adding that into your routine once a week will not hurt you. Can we be real? We all suck at drinking water. It will get to two o'clock in the afternoon and I look up and I will have not had a single sip. So if you're like me, I recommend you drink green tea. Green tea is super high in antioxidants, and if you don't dump a whole bunch of sugar and agave nectar in it, it's going to do wonderful things for you while also boosting your water intake. Let's just say you're a girly who likes to have a frappuccino, a matcha, and a pop. Yes, I say pop, I'm from the Midwest. All within one day, you'll have had almost the amount of calories that you could have in a meal in just three drinks, plus probably three times the amount of sugar that's needed. Green tea is a great option to use that's warm. So it's a great like fall winter time drink and also great first thing in the morning because sometimes when I wake up, it's really dark, it's really cold and I just don't want to drink eight ounces of freezing cold water. So I'll make a green tea and I'll be sure not to add a bunch of sugar to it. And that way it's helping me on my health goals and drink some water because yeah, I just, I'm just really bad at drinking water, honestly. <laughs> If you're anything like me and you're completely obsessed with athletes after watching the Olympics this summer, this one's for you. I researched the top leanest sports with the flattest stomachs, and this is what I found. Number one, gymnastics. Of course, we got Simone Biles and Suni Lee. They're snatched. They're gorgeous. We all want their stomachs. Swimming and diving. 
track sprinters, cycling, boxing, MMA, and last but not least, dance slash ballet. Ballet dancers require strong core muscles for balance and control, often resulting in a toned and flat stomach. From my own fat loss journey, the moment I joined track, not only did it help me from a competitive level, it honestly took the focus off of me trying to lose fat. Which I know may seem counterintuitive, but when I stopped focusing on trying to lose fat is actually when I lost fat because I feel like I was so obsessed with just the day-to-day -day stepping on the scale. Did I lose fat yet? And instead, I just joined a sport and this sport allowed me to meet other people, get into a community, do something that's competitive and compete at a high level that over time became so much fun for me that I ended up just losing fat on the way there. So try out one of these sports, okay? Because because you're gonna be Jack. Apple cider vinegar. If you've never heard of it before, it's this incredible drink that you can probably get at your local grocery store. What I do is I get eight ounces of water and I pour about, a, I take the top off of the apple cider vinegar, pour some of it in there and I dump it twice within my eight ounces of water. And all of this will taste disgusting. <laughs> Forewarning, it's it's a hard drink to get through, but it helps you tremendously and it helped me tremendously specifically on fat loss. I used to love taking this first thing in the morning or right after my workout and I saw incredible results. Start with a salad. When you go to decide what you're gonna eat, whether it's for lunch or for dinner, always try to add in a salad within your meal because then you're just gonna be getting all of these fibrous greens that are gonna help you feel full before you start to eat all of the other things. And if you're someone who you really struggle with food, this could be a great tip to think about on what foods you should add versus what you should always subtract. I think a lot of times when we think about losing fat, the first thing we think about is, I have to take this out, I have to take this out, I have to take this food group out, and it leaves you feeling really restricted and like tight. But when you start thinking about, oh my God, what can I add? And it's like, oh, add a salad to your meal, add apple cider vinegar to your meal, add water to your meal. And you start thinking about all of the things that you should add versus all of the things you should restrict and limit. It allows you to have more of an abundance mindset with your fat loss journey, which tremendously helped me. Bear with me on this one, but stand while you eat. I don't know if anybody's like me, but when I'm sitting down, I can't tell always how full I am. And I know I will walk away from like a Texas roadhouse after eating about six of those biscuits and I stand up and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so full. Why didn't I realize this when I was sitting? It's because when you actually stand up and you can feel the weight of that food actually sink in, it helps you. And something else is to chew your food slowly. So it takes your body about seven minutes to tell when you're full. Did you hear me? Seven minutes. You know how many cookies I could eat in seven minutes if I really wanted to? And so if you stand up, if you chew really slowly, all of this allows your body to have more time to digest the food and also register whether you're still hungry or if you're full. My mom is one of the most incredible women I've ever had the honor of knowing. She is my best friend. She's my mentor. And I truly hope I can live a life as impactful as her but her life hasn't always been easy. When she was about 25 years old, her dad passed away in a boating accident and this caused her to be really angry, really hurt, and ultimately she ran to drugs. She became addicted, she dropped out of school, and over time she ended up getting help and seeking counseling. And while she was seeking counseling, she ended up meeting my dad and they both were able to go to recovery together. And now my mom has an organization based out of Cleveland where she helps people with substance abuse disorders. And I share this incredible story because not not only am I proud to call this woman my mom, but because she's taught me the importance and power of behavioral techniques. Behavioral techniques are methods that a lot of social workers, psychologists use to change the actions, attitudes, and behavior of someone so that whatever action you're trying to change, it'll make it long lasting. And I think when it comes to our fitness journey, sometimes we opt for the things that are quick and easy and we forget to think about the things that may be small now, but make such a big difference in the future. And one of those things is, for instance, when you go to the grocery 
grocery store or you park to get your nails done to maybe park a little bit farther away like at the end of the back of the parking lot so that then you have to walk a little bit further to get into the store. This is something that if you think about over the lifespan of you doing this every time you go to the store, it will add up. Just as, for instance, my best friend freshman year, she went to Ohio State and she lived on the 18th floor. She made it a mission that at least once a day, if she went back up to her apartment, she would take the stairs. That's a commitment. That's a behavioral technique more than I've ever seen. But even though these are small examples, I'm sure there's one or two things that you could do in your life that allows you to stand more, to not live as much of a sedentary life, to potentially get more movement in in smaller areas that can drive incremental change in the future. Sometimes we look at the big things and we be we believe that the big habits like picking up exercise five times a week is going to go so far but if you're able to make just one or two slight habit changes like parking a little bit farther in the parking lot or getting a standing desk or taking the stairs every now and then it will make a tremendous difference in reducing your fat. Nutrition scientist and educator Alan Aragon developed the perfect way for you to go grocery shopping so what I want you to do is get out your phone a piece of paper, a pen, and write out this list on the spot. So what he has you do is select 20 of your favorite food items. And within this list of 20, there's going to be six different categories of food. Your protein, your fibrous vegetables, your starches, your milk, your fruit, and your fats. Within all of these foods, I want you to select three of your favorites. So for instance, for protein, you could say, I want to select salmon, ground turkey and grass-fed ground beef. That's going to be all the protein that you select the next time you go grocery shopping and you do that same exact process for the other five categories of food. Once you map that out, you'll notice you have 18 things listed and we said at the beginning that this was going to be a list of 20. Those other two food items are going to be your fun foods. Maybe it's a bottle of wine or some cookies and this is showing you exactly how you should be baking out your ingredients or your food list every time you go grocery shopping so that most of your foods are going to be coming from protein, fibrous carbohydrates that are going to give you energy and life throughout the week, but you still have your fun foods that are going to help keep you balanced. This in essence is the 80-20 rule where 80% of your food that you're eating is going to give you energy, it's going to give you life, and 20% is that fun food. It's a little bit of balance helping you be maintainable, but the whole point of all of this is that the food that you select should be food that that you like. If you like the food that you're eating, you're 10 times more likely to stick to it. Transform your transitions. What I mean by this is maximize the time that you spend and be as intentional as possible when you are transitioning your body from one thing to the next thing. We have transitions all throughout our day from the time that we wake up to when we go to work to when we get off of work and we decide to play with our kids or cook a meal and even when we go to sleep. And I think the two things that I at least and I think a lot of other people struggle with are the transitions of going to sleep and waking up up in the morning and the more that you are able to maximize this time the easier it's going to be because a lot of us know a rough idea of what foods we should be eating or we're able to be consistent in the gym but the thing that will get us is sleep and stress and sleep is the ultimate restorer i know there are so many dopamine addicting things out there like watching tv at night or drinking energy drinks or even coffee boost your dopamine out of this world but Sleep is the only thing that's going to truly restore your energy in your body. And there are numerous research studies showing that poor sleep and not getting enough sleep is linked with weight gain. And this is why I believe that the more you can maximize your morning routine and your night routine, the easier it's going to be for you to get a consistent amount of sleep each night, which is also going to decrease the amount of calories you're eating in a day and allow you to have more energy throughout the day to make the best decisions decisions possible. Something that I do is one hour before bed, I put my phone on the charge, I put it away from me, I begin reading, and I try not to look at any bright light. And I know for some people, if you're a creative, this can be really difficult because sometimes the best ideas come in
come in at night. So I keep a journal next to my bed and anytime an idea pops up, I try to write it in there. This process allows my body to start winding down. So then by the time I really go to sleep, I'm in a more restful state. Transform your transitions and you will start to see more consistency throughout your body. And that's going to allow you to reduce weight use a standing desk. I love my standing desk and it's one of the best investments I've ever made. It helps increase my posture and energy levels throughout the day. What I try to do because I work a nine to five job is every hour on the hour, stand up, even if I don't use my standing desk at least, stand up to stand to release my arms, even my arms just popped right then, and to just relax and stretch out my body from being in a tight, closed position of typing on my laptop. Take multiple measures of progress. Typically when we all decide to go on a fat loss journey or specifically lose fat around our stomach, we will then step on the scale. Y'all know how I feel about the scale. Okay, there's so many other ways to measure, but I do get it. What I want you to do is use quantitative and qualitative forms of measurement. Quantitative are gonna give you hard numbers like stepping on a scale, getting a DEXA scan, or even using a tape measure so that you can see the change over time. Qualitative is going to allow allow you to know how your energy levels are, how you're feeling. So when you're going in for your workout that day, track down how you're feeling during that workout. Is your body fatigued? Are you really sore? Did you get enough sleep last night? And you can even do this with your energy levels just in a given week or in one day specifically. Another qualitative form of measurement is how your clothes fit on your body. If you have a pair of jeans that you love, put on those pair of jeans and just notice how you're feeling within it. Does it feel really tight around your thighs? Is it a little bit looser in the stomach area? And just take note of that over time. And the reason why I think this is so important is because typically when you're losing fat, you become so fixated on a number or on ensuring that every single day when you look in the mirror, there's a difference. But typically to have a real change, it takes at least six to 12 weeks to see noticeable differences. And so while you're on this journey, you want to ensure that not only are you checking in with the numbers on the scale, but you're checking in with how your body is feeling and doing. All in all, for you to lose stomach fat, it's going to take you being consistent and being patient, which I know is one of the most difficult things to do. But if you think about it, your stomach fat didn't get there overnight. And so therefore, it's not going to all fall off overnight takes time. We have to adjust what we're doing and notice our specific lifestyles. Are we really busy at the moment? Did we just have a baby? Is work slowing down right now? So now I have a little bit more wiggle room. As you adjust and change over time within your lifestyle habits, your fitness and health habits need to adjust and change as well. But be patient with yourself. Take it day by day, one step at a time, one habit at a time, and I promise you, you will get there. I really hope this video helped you. If it did, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you on the next video. Bye bestie.